Number 40. To consider the effect of wires hung on poles, we take data from example 4.8, in which tension in wires supporting a traffic light were calculated. The left wire made an angle of 30 degrees below the horizontal with the top of its pole and carried a tension of 108 newtons. The 12 meter tall hollow aluminum pole is equivalent in stiffness to a 4.5 centimeter diameter solid cylinder. Letter A. How far is it bent to the side? All right, so take a look at the photo on the upper right hand side. Uh, this is example 4.8. And what they're doing is they're talking about the tension right here. Okay, here's the uh, angle of 30 degrees, right? So basically what I'm gonna do here is let me just uh, draw and fill in the entire triangle here. All right, we can kind of see the beginning of one, but let me, uh, let me draw that in. So here we have one side, the other side, and then here's the resultant. Now the resultant is the tension. That's what they told us, that the tension in that cable is 108 newtons. All right, so this value up here is 108 newtons. Okay, so now um, remember that this force here, okay, if we look at it from the pole's perspective, the tensional force is pulling, or the, yeah, the tension, the, what am I trying to say? The weight, <laughs> the weight of the light, right, is pulling in this direction on the pole, okay? So we have both a bending force this way and a compression force this way. And that's what the triangle basically tells us, right? If this resultant vector here has an arrowhead out here, right, then that means there's an arrowhead here for the, uh, for the Y component and then an arrowhead in there for the X component, okay? So this I'll call, um, this is the perpendicular component, so I'll call this, perp well, perpendicular to what? Well, it's perpendicular to uh, the pole, right? And this would be the vertical component, or aka the force of compression because it's pushing down on the pole. All right, so in order to find, letter A says how far is it bent to the side, you have to remember this is a shear problem and we're looking for um, forces perpendicular. And I drew a T there to represent uh, perpendicular, I don't know why. It's an upside down T for perpendicular. There we go. All right, so I'm looking and thinking about this formula right here on the right hand side, that the force of shear, the shear force of the perpendicular force is equal to the shear's modulus multiplied by the shear deformation all over the initial length, uh, multiplied by the cross-sectional area of the object that we are talking about. So we wanna find how far it has been to the side, we're trying to find the shear deformation. So simply solve this for delta x. Okay, shortcut is whatever is in the numerator on the right-hand side, now put into the denominator on the left. So SA is in the denominator. Whatever values over here are in the denominator, now put in the numerator on the right, on the left-hand side, excuse me. And we just solved it for delta X. So I need to know all four of these things, all right? So instead of writing F sub S for force of shear, I'm just gonna write F sub par uh, perpendicular because they're the same. The perpendicular force is the shear force. All right, so now uh, going back to the tri triangle on the upper right-hand side, how do I find how do I find this component to the force vector to this 108 Newton vector? Well, simple, right? We're just gonna use trigonometry. I know this angle in here. I know the hypotenuse. I'm looking for the side adjacent. I'm gonna use cosine. So let's do that. So let me write it over here. Um, Cosine of theta will be equal to uh, adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine of that angle 30 will equal my force perpendicular divided by uh, 108. And simply just do your cross multiplication now. So the perpendicular force will be equal to cosine of 30 times 108. So we get 93.5. So 93.5 newtons. That is the perpendicular. Great, we got that part. What's the initial length? Well, they told it to us, right? The pole is initially 11 meters uh, tall. So we took care of that. Next, the shear's modulus. Um, we would look this up in the table. I just wrote down the two values on the bottom right-hand side. So the shear uh, modulus of aluminum was 25 times 10 to the nine. You look that up in a table. And now we just need the cross-sectional area. So we got to think about well, what, what is the general shape of the pole? They told us that the pole is a cylinder, right? And that cylinder has a diameter of 4.5 centimeters. So let's draw that in. 
So here this would be, right, the diameter of 4.5 centimeters, but I don't care about the diameter, I want to know the radius, right? So how do we find the radius? Just divide it by 2. So this should be 2.25, right, um, centimeters. Okay, that is the radius. Just divide the diameter by 2. Why do I care about that? Well, because I want to find the area, the cross-sectional area of this thing, and it looks like a circle to me. So therefore, I have to use the area of a circle formula, which is pi r squared. So I need to know the radius. Now, just remember, though, I would prefer to have it in meters, right? Because everything that goes into this formula right here has to be in terms of meters. So just simply move this decimal two places to the left, and that would give us 0 0.0225 meters. That's the radius. That's the value I'm going to use here. So the area is equal to pi times 0 0.0225 squared. Great. Now let's plug it in. So pi times 0 0.0225 squared. And we get a value of, what do we got? 1.59 times 10 to the minus 3 it looks like. That's the area in meters squared. All right, so let's plug that. So now we got everything we need. So let's plug it all in. The So I'm Focused on this formula now. The perpendicular force we found to be 93.5 newtons. Right? The initial length was 12 meters. The uh, shear modulus was 25 times 10 to the 9th. And the cross-sectional area we just found to be 1.59 times 10 to the minus 3. And that is equal to the shear deformation. So just plug it on in. So 93.5 times 12 divided by parentheses 25 times 10 to the 9 times 1.59 times 10 to the minus 3, close parentheses. And we get a value, so it's going to bend by 2.82, let me write that a little neater, 2.8, uh, 2.82, all right, one more time, guys, 2.82, there we go, times 10 to the minus 5 meters is equal to that uh, shear deformation, that's the amount it will bend. All right, not bad. Let's take a look at B. So it says, how, by how much is it compressed? All right, so guess what? Basically same problem, just different formula. We're going to use Young's formula now, where it says the force of tension or compression is equal to Young's modulus multiplied by the change in length or the amount it's compressed or stretched divided by the initial length of the object we're talking about multiplied by the cross-sectional area. So let's solve it for delta L. Same thing as before. We basically get right F times Li all over y times a is equal to delta L. And what we now need to do is figure out the force of compression. I'm just going to write a little c here. Because it's compression in this case, look, the vector's pointing down. So how do we find that? Think about trigonometry. I know the hypotenuse, I know this angle, I'm looking for the side opposite of that angle. Sounds like sine to me. So sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine of 30 will be equal to the uh, force of compression over 108. So the force of compression will simply be sine of 30 times 108. And we get it to be 54, right? 54 newtons. Great. So we got that. We know the initial length, right? It's still 12 meters. That hasn't changed. The Young's modulus now is, I wrote it down here, 70 times 10 to the 9. And the cross-sectional area is the same as it was before, the 1.59 times 10 to the minus 3. So... Whoop-dee-doo! We can plug it all in. So 54 newtons times 12 meters. All right, all divided by Young's modulus, 70 times 10 to the ninth, multiplied by the cross-sectional error of 1.59 times 10 to the minus 3. And that's all equal to the amount it will be compressed, or the change in the length. Just plug it all in. So 54 times 12, divide that then by parentheses, 70 times 10 to the 9, times 1.59 times 10 to the minus 3. Close parentheses, and we get... 5.82 times 10 to the minus 6 is equal to delta L, right? And that is in terms of meters. That's the amount that it will be compressed by. Not a lot at all. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Really do hope this helped. Please remember to subscribe. That would be awesome. And I look forward to helping you uh, with the next question. Take care.